how do you see this laning phase going here? I, I feel like the, the Janna and the Misfortune are going to be extremely powerful in that duel lane in particular. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have the knock up rate. You have the healing potential. You have the sustainability for your Misfortune to stay alive further. So I think, yeah, I do agree with that statement. People don't realize that uh, actually the Janna's shield, even though yeah. it's a pretty long cooldown in the early game, it actually does give extra damage to the um, to your ADC. So that's going to be pretty huge as far as just keeping away uh, the opposing side. Um, as far as your, your our other um, matchups, we have the Aurelian Soul obviously going against Oriana, and then over in the uh, side lane is going to be Gragas over going mm -hmm. off against the Olaf. Or excuse me, not not the Olaf, the uh, the uh, Camille. So. Pretty interesting matchups all around here. Yeah, and we're and w when we're talking about an Oriel and Soul, I'm expecting a lot of Ron to come through. And because of the mobility, he he could just go from lane to lane in ease. So Oriel and Soul, something to be seen through for this oh. game. Okay, yeah, Oriel doing quite a bit of damage. Lulu helping mm -hmm. out in the beginning there, and then Oriolian Soul. Uh, doing a bit of extra damage himself, so already have Rubik's on our Oriana in a bit of trouble getting frozen out of the lane here by our next play player with a Chuli. I'm trying to read their name. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to be able to say their names properly. <laughs> I guess I can just read the the right the the uh, left and right panels instead of just staring mm -hmm. at the middle of the screen. <laughs> yeah, we have we have Arisen Chuli. The Japanese name is Jinsen no Tabakata, which is like the way of the the way to eat life. <laughs> Not really sure what he means by that. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I live in Japan, so uh, anyway. Oh, and then we have Jushi, Uzi, and then on the Leo side we have Miggy, three S H Rubik's, uh, Nixu, and Gambit on the Misfortune. So that's our player to see how this pans out. Yeah, and looking at the bottom lane right now, I think it's it's actually quite an even uh, playing field for both of these teams right now as Jinx and Misfortune is trying to get a hold of themselves. But I think Misfortune, when it comes to poking capabilities right now against the Jinx, is going to be more dominant because of the, the first skill, the skill shot of the Misfortune. And I think mm. that is what hurts oh. when it comes to a Misfortune. And that was oh. a failed skirmish in the top lane. Let's see how it's going to turn out. Yeah, exactly. They tried to go onto the Camille, but she's able to get out of here. Had to burn her flash, though. So, um, you know, couldn't just get out with her, her typical wall hop. Uh, mm -hmm. Lee Sin seemed to be in a bit of trouble, but... Um, be able to get on out of there. Does give up the uh, Rift Color though. And so it looks like, I believe Rift Colors have, both of them have gone over to next place. So that's, doesn't seem like a big deal, but having that, that having that vision allows you to rotate much more confidently, particularly when you uh, are worried about what your team, what the opponent might be doing as far as taking objectives and such. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have the knowledge on where the enemy jungler would be. You have the knowledge on the gank that may occur going from the top lane to the mid lane. Or vice versa, from bottom lane into the mid lane. So it's going to be very important. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, I was not expecting Aurelian Soul to be dominating this mid lane matchup so badly. Uh, he's actually doing an incredible job here. And that means Oriana has to go back. Um, and he's going to go ahead, instead of phrasing the wave, going to go ahead and clear as quickly as possible. So he can potentially go for a gank. Uh, I'm curious to see. No, he's going to go ahead and go back. So he wanted to just get that, get that uh, far and be able to... Have a, a couple seconds to get back here. Taking a look at this gold at the moment. Aurelian still sitting in a, a fat 2.7k. Shares that with the uh, Jinx as well. Highest member on the side here of uh, Liam is that Misfortune 2.6k. Sharing that lead with our Gragas. And as you can see, a small but uh, you know potentially reasonable lead here for next play in that gold up about uh, 500. Mm-hmm. I mean, the pressure that they're putting out against the Esports is quite considerably big right now. And Oriel and Soul in the near future is going to be dominating potentially the map as he has the ultimate. He has the skills to go from lane to the lanes. I keep on repeating this because it is going to be very important. But it looks like they're setting oh. up for a fight. Ult comes out here from Camille. They're going to be jumping on this Oriana, and she is as good as dead there. No real, real way to keep her alive. Camille does get halved in health here, and she's actually going to rotate over to the dragon, allowing for the uh, Gragas to push over in the top lane, but they're deeming this to be more important. Back, Camille's going to go back to base, as they can see multiple members off the side of Liab already, or still in lane, excuse me. And uh, take this very cavalierly. Okay, so he does have the spite, so it's going to be going over to the side of next play as they able to uh, secure the first dragon of the. Oh, oh, that that is a fat finger right there. 
That is a fat finger from our Jana. It pops her ult by accident. Uh, that's a bit unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate it is. They're gonna get the Mountain Drake to the side of NXP. And yeah, it's just a matter of method methodological play coming in from next play esports, right? They've taken the Oriana kill from the mid lane, and with Oriana out, there is no potential AoE coming in for the side of Liab Esports. Now, considering that Gragas is also on the top lane, so it's a matter of having that 5v3 situation once more. We've seen it through from the first series, like Omega Esports against 16 uh, bit gaming, and we're seeing what's once again, here for NXP versus the Ab Esports. Yeah, uh, I think the the word you're looking for is methodical. So yeah, methodical gameplay yeah. coming out here from from Leah, <laughs> but, or from both sides, excuse me. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, next play doing an extremely good job uh, of you know kind of navigating this game. That said, they're only up one k gold, so I do like the the fact that Leab is not you know panicking. They're only one down one k gold. They're down one dragon buff, but it's not a, a hugest deal. Um, they're, they're gonna be perfectly all right. We do have like we do have a switch here out of next play Camille going into the bottom lane and Liab immediately recognize and they're gonna go for a uh, potential three for one in game here But looks like um, Leeson is not going to commit realizes that Aurelia and Soul was gonna be on the way, but they're <clears throat> abusing their position Oh, here comes the Leeson jumping onto the Aurelia and Soul. He's gonna have to try to get out of there The ult comes out from both players and he gets so oh, he gets popped off he gets knocked out of existence by the ult from Oriana. The ult comes out from Jinx as well, but unable to finish off those members. Leeson's going to be a little bit greedy and take Oriana's uh, fruit, but uh, they're going to be perfectly fine. Oh, never mind. Excuse me. They're not going to be fine. In comes the Camille as well as the Olaf. Leeson tries to re-engage onto the Camille, try to get at least one kill before he dies, but he's going to die nonetheless as they're going to turn their vision, their targets over to the Riptail. Camille's is still extremely low, and she's going to go ahead and back out of there as she realizes that Gragas could potentially just come in and kill. Ward comes out. Ult comes out from Gragas. Not really sure that was completely necessary. A little bit of a um, panic play coming out here from the side of Liev. Mm -hmm. As uh, I don't have a screen right now. Do you have a screen? Yeah. I don't have a screen. I don't have a screen as well. But Dave, we talk about how you know, the, the process of Next Bay is doing them very, very good. Uh, sorry about that. I have a little bit of tech issue over here. So... A little bit of uh, screen problem. We're disconnecting right. and uh, reconnecting back up right here. Yeah. Uh, as I was saying, it was like perfect. They were trying to go for those responses in the mid lane. It was super good. They were trying to get those kills. They have the Olaf to come through with the Camille taking a lot of kills down. And on top of that, they've taken a turret as well. So it's basically going to be a 5k gold league coming in for the side of next play esports. Yeah, very well played by them. They actually contributed five to that top lane. Uh, we're going to get a replay from about a couple of minutes ago. Kind of crazy mm -hmm. how that turned out as the uh, the, the ult came in. But you saw you can see the video map on our replay. The Olaf and the Camille not letting them get away. Actually using the leg sweep along with the uh, the flash there to pick that up. Lisa nearly gets the kill under the Camille. And then they obviously set their sights onto the uh, the Rift Herald. Uh, I'm, mm -hmm. at, I'm Actually, Producer Dave, uh, did the Rift Herald get released to take out that top turret or was that just taken normally okay <laughs> okay well dave doesn't remember but that's perfectly fine regardless whether the rift herald was released or not it's still about a four and a half k gold lead here for the side of next play they have mm -hmm. really been dominating this game thus far Although the Infernal Drake is now open, this is going to be very important for any of these teams. This is going to produce percentage bonus damage for the one who takes it. So it's going to be the contest. It's going to be the take. But actually very interesting that Liab Esports just freely let it go for the side of the next week Esports. Considering that Camille wasn't there as well. So yeah. interesting. Yeah, it looks like Liab are playing this very passively. Um... Not sure if they could have contested that properly, but uh, certainly something to keep in mind. But uh, no, that all aside, it looks like Olaf is on the chase. Oh my goodness! Mm. That is three members dropping in a matter of seconds, and it looks like Orion is going to drop as well. All right, looks like giving up the dragon didn't matter in the end. That passive play actually hurt them because four members go down in quick succession. Olaf showing how powerful he can be. Oh, and there's Riptail. That answers our question. Your tail's going to go backwards into the turret. And um, yeah, it turns out not be.
fucking susceptible to crowd control. when it comes to that one and oh, it's goodness. just you know what oh. he's dominating he was like flashing all the way going in for that double kill going in for a lot of slows and that is something to be scared about by liab esports that lulu ult i don't know d2 it should be nerfed at this point we're seeing it grow we're seeing it happen it's really i don't dominating. think it would have made a difference though because mm -hmm. everyone the, the the coordination was just absolutely perfect there from from next play you got the olaf coming in with his ult so he doesn't get affected right and then, but then you have the the aurelian soul coming at the exact right time there, using his mm -hmm. third ability to hop over the walls and just everyone was there, there was no hope there was no hope there was yeah. no place to run they were stuck between not even a, a rock and a hard place but also a boulder and a cliff on either side as well there was nowhere to run for liam that was really well played by the uh, next play here and uh, next play trying mm -hmm. to put the finishing touches on this game they're about 9k up in gold and it just they're just putting on a master class here liam very playing very passive though. what do you think about that just overall this game i mean for Camille? No, no, no. Liab, Liab has been playing this game oh. extremely passive from the beginning. I, I just wonder what, what you think about that. Yeah, I, I think you're respecting NXP. Because if someone dies for the side of Liab, we don't know what could happen next, right? Because earlier into the matchup, for the mid lane, they got the Rihanna. They went for the Dragon and they've taken it. And once more, when the Ref Herald came, they've taken a kill. They're going in for that objective. So once more, I think Liab Esports was thinking, you know what? We should not be killed by NXP so that we could potentially try and contest something that could happen next. And I think NXP Esports is taking it the safe route on not taking an objective without taking a kill, without taking something for them to have that advantage when you're taking the objective. So I think Liab Esports being respectful, just going in for that passive play. Yeah, uh, I, I think, and the thing is, like, next play, you can see they're only taking their chances when they see a, a clear opening, right? Like, you saw mm -hmm. that the gang over in the bottom lane and able to kill those four members, but only because they realized that uh, that Liab was out of position. So, really nice patient play for here from next play. They're not really forcing anything. They're only taking, uh, you know, they're, they're taking calculated risks here. Every single time their opponent seems to be out of position, they go for it. When it seems like they can take an objective, they go for it. Uh, let's, we're taking a look at our uh, items here. It looks like multiple... Um, we're, we're up to, looks like, three items uh, for most of our players here mm -hmm. on next play. Three, three completed non-boot items, I should say. So there are, they are definitely power spiked, and that's why next player are doing so well in these team fights. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a matter of weighing out the potential risks and potential benefits for your team. Right? If you get a kill, what would happen next? If you get the objective, what would happen next? I think next play esports is just thinking about it in the same way Liab esports is thinking about it as well. So it's just a matter of weighing it out. And at this point in time, Liab esports has a lot of risks involved in this game. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, looks like a very easy Cloud Dragon going over to next play. That's three dragons to their name. Uh, I, I forget the timing, but I believe the next one is going to be the Elder Dragon. And if they do pick that up, they're going to be pretty far ahead. Um, you know, obviously, they're already already pretty far ahead as it is. Mm -hmm. Just kind of going through the motions here. <clears throat> obviously, I mean, they're, they are up 10k gold, but they don't know that. I think if they knew the actual gold score, uh, like, like the observers, like the you know the, the God Vision that we have, then uh, I think that next play might go for you know potential 50 or try to bait out um, uh, a skirmish around the Baron. But... Um, Oh, well, speaking of skirmish, uh, we're going to have <laughs> one between the Gragas and the Camille here. Oh, actually, very nicely done on the Gragas with that ultimate. And that means that we're going to have to force a flash out here from our Camille. Had to turn tail and run. But that Oriana was on that side. Big ball coming out for the Aurelian Soul. And the massive damage coming in from his side. Already the GI has been popped onto the Lee Sin. And Blue Team is able to pick up the Baron Nashar as they have that on the side already. Dana goes down as well. That is... But two members down, there's going to be another member going down as well as Misfortune Falls as a 13k gold lead. That is a Baron, and that is potential march to victory here for next play. All right, let's talk about that. Camille baited out into the bottom lane. Look at this one. They've baited out two champions into the bottom lane. Oh, and with Aurelia and Sol, yeah, we, we've talked about it a while ago. The massive AoE potential when it comes to CC from the Aurelia and Sol is going to be big time. 
for NXP. And they've showed us how it really works, right? It's really, really strong. And it's a matter of, you know, that the triple AOE um, discussions coming in from Oriental is really big as well. So it's constant damage. It's CC potentials against you have esports is taking them down. So it's a matter of baiting out the enemy team and getting the benefit out of it. Oh boy. Okay, we're taking a look at uh, Jinx's build here. And uh, she is quite buff, uh, to say the least. Obviously getting mm -hmm. massive damage out uh, every time she attacks him. Obviously getting the the AoE. I forget what the, the name of the, the red item is, but that's what that does. Oh, okay, another another massive ball potentially coming from earlier. So we were talking earlier about the Janna and the, the Misfortune being like a pair, right? And uh, okay, never mind. So hold that thought. Uh, uh, Olaf doesn't want to wait for any explanation. He's going to go in for the kill. One is down, two down, three down, four. I feel like count... Uh, the count from Sesame Street as just people are dropping left and right from uh, from uh, Leap, excuse me, and that is complete ace. That is going to be the game. That is a dominant performance here from Next Play. Yeah, it's a it's a lot that happened from that game number one, and I think once more we've seen how responses, how reacting to certain scenarios was really for the side of NXP on that game. It's undisputed matches. It's undisputed uh, ganks from NXP.